but in spirit we think it's possible in space though everyone mm. keeps asking if there's a possibility that she could come back and i think you know with the way that seth writes there's really endless possibilities so yeah i've been saying uh something similar i'm like well anything could happen on a show but also i mean there's a reason that charlie was created to she served a purpose she, there were stakes and if she, if she comes back as much as we want her to come back it kind of uh makes the stakes not so stakeable <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um how uh, how early i mean you must have been excited to get this role uh how soon if not right off the bat were you kind of made aware that charlie is a one season deal when before I booked it, um, my the meeting that I had after kind of a little bit of the audition process I had with Seth and he kind of went over the what his ideas were, because at the time he was still kind of writing it and didn't really know. Mm -hmm. And I loved the idea of um, of dying because I it's always kind of a thing like, so how do you feel about this? And I was like, oh, yeah, hell yeah, that sounds great. That sounds like such a cool like story. Um, and I'm so glad it, it happened the way it did. Cause it really does show just a cool arc that I was really happy I got to play. So I knew from the beginning yeah, what I, I didn't know was COVID was going to happen. So I didn't know I was going to have a pending death <laughs> for three years. That yeah, everyone's I like, just stay alive a little bit longer. And, <laughs> uh, but it was such an epic death. I mean, you're, you, you're going down in history as is a character one of the most epic character deaths on a sci-fi series ever i mean you went down with the entire planet yeah well thank you i i mean you know this is i am new to this kind of genre so that actually that title really makes me feel very good um also the writing and the whole character i mean it's not really it wasn't my doing necessarily but yeah i think the ride that she takes and the way that she goes out was very impactful. And I think it just made for those little moments that she had throughout the, throughout the show, um, stand out. And like, I, I really hope the audience took away kind of the journey that she went on. And well, it was quite the journey. I mean, you were basically, I mean, when we, when we start up with, with season three, everyone is mad at Isaac and the fans aren't mad at Isaac, but, but the other characters are. And Charlie really um, let us see through the eyes of why these, why people are so mad at Isaac, the betrayal. And we got that through Charlie. We were able to, to see her point of view and everyone's point of view that was mad at Isaac. Yeah. Uh, I think it was, go ahead. I was just say coming into that, coming into the role, uh, was any of that on your mind when, when you were, playing when you were playing Charlie um no I mean no not necessarily because I was putting myself in the position of being a new character which also helped because I was new mm -hmm. to the but I I I think it was important to see someone from a different ship that hadn't known Isaac and maybe comes from a ship that didn't have a Kalon on board kind of have that point of view um because the even with the intense situations and everything, you don't really see necessarily the the impact completely because everything still is a family on the Orville. Like they all like really love each other, even though it was devastating. It would be kind of hard to see um, one of the other castmates on the bridge being that hateful and spiteful towards Isaac after this long. So I think it was really important for me to show someone that didn't know Isaac and didn't see him as anybody but one of them mm -hmm. and play that as strong as possible so that you know by the end you see even just the little cracks happening and ending up you know it's not like they became like BFFs but I think she just gained so much more respect for him and that big moment when he saves her at the very end but doesn't kill the Mocklin, I think, was a really big moment for her. But she just ends up learning that not every everything has nuance, like she says. Every everybody is not a whole. So to take people as they are. And I think the Orville ship is probably one 
of few ships that are in the Orville. I think about it like the states in the U.S. You know, mm-hmm. it's different rules and things that they do. So I think Ed runs his ship probably very different and more diplomatic and more uh, uh, accepting than maybe any other experience that I've had. Mm-hmm. So I learned a lot through working on the Orville and seeing how people treat each other and listen to each other. And you kind of said it uh, uh, a couple seconds ago and you said as one of them, because uh, in our own world today, there's a lot of us and them uh, uh, going on. And Charlie got to actually, we got to see her journey to see from the other side, to yeah. question her own uh, her own beliefs, her own experiences. And, uh, and I felt, I felt Charlie was kind of holding on to the anger about her friend, Amanda, uh, getting killed, uh, as a tribute. You know, a lot of people do that. So they'll lose somebody and they'll hold on to that anger as a way to, uh, tri- uh, you know, give tribute to that person that they lost. Yeah. I think too, I, I was just thinking about even the episode with all the girls that have their own community. Mm-hmm. How, yeah. How they were so close minded. And to me, I'm sitting there thinking, gosh, they're crazy. Like, why, how do they think that way? And there were just times like that that were, that I saw on the ship that kind of internally made me think, oh my gosh, I'm doing that same exact thing. Mm-hmm. It was very, th- that race was basically the female version of, of, the closed mindedness of Mocklins. Yeah. They're all about the males. And, and, and these women are all about uh, the females, you know, girl power, boy power. <laughs> the, the Orville gives us all of that. Uh, now you had the job on the show of being mean to Mark all season long. <laughs> How was that experience? I mean, I, I think it's fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> He, I mean, really, I'm talking to a robot most of the time. And as you saw, he's actually really good at looking like a robot in person, which I was so honestly shocked and really admirable of that acting because I would never be, I mean, I could if I practiced, you know, I I could, I'm not going to say I could not do something, but that would be very challenging as a human to play something without um, having emotion with your face. Uh, I mean... Look, if I get a chance to be to be mean and get to play a character that's like that, that's fun for me. I mean, no, we're obviously friends and I don't mean it, but I mean, I I had no problem with it. That's for sure. <laughs> well, is there a part of you uh, uh, similar to Charlie where you just like to have a glass of bourbon and, and crack some skulls every once in a while? <laughs> no, that's funny. I mean, I like that that was her drink because it it felt right with the whole being in love with Amanda, just throwing in those little kind of more masculine qualities to her. I liked, but no, it wouldn't be bourbon. It would probably be tequila or wine. That, yeah, that works for me. I might have the bourbon in there as well. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Now uh, there was just so much action this season. I mean, uh, Charlie's death was in the biggest episode of the season, just effects upon effects upon effects. How was it dealing with, I mean, all season long, all the things that you had to uh, go through as an actor. I mean, I know a lot of it's imagination. How was, how were you able to imagine all these things that were being thrown at her? Um, the hardest was, you know, those long bridge. We would shoot a lot of scenes out of order on the bridge, especially um, scenes that we were in war and had the bombs and everything going off. So those it was just complicated knowing exactly where you were in the story, but I just made sure to kind of, you know, know it's all the behind the scenes work. It's, I got the scripts. I know exactly what I'm thinking in this episode, in this moment. And even though I may not have a line or you may not, it may not be a big scene. It's still something that I still want to track and maybe no one notices. I don't know, but that's kind of, was the hard part, but I have my notes and my backstories and things like that. And then, yeah, the, they all, they had firework or bomb things every single time. And those were really loud. I, we all had to wear earplugs, but I, at the end of the day, I can't see anything. We're all looking at a blue screen 90% of the time. So 
when we get to see the episodes, it's kind of like we get to watch the movie for the first time too. Mm. I had no idea the krill was going to look so cool like that. I mean, that mm -hmm. was like my favorite looking uh, worlds to me. Oh, yeah. It looked like super Vegas at night. Yeah. The whole super. planet. <laughs> that was super duper Vegas right there. Uh, we actually got to hang out a little bit at the electric shoot premiere at IMAX. And um, I just I, I just wanted to thank you for coming up to me and we chat and hung out for a little bit. And uh, I just thought you were the loveliest person. So I've been telling everybody, be cool. Charlie might not like your friend Isaac, but Anne is the coolest. <laughs> so so y'all better show some respect. And uh, and now I, I'm seeing you're my friend since you did that whole boot thing. I'm like, yes, he noticed all my boots. I have a massive boot collection and I love that you appreciated that. I appreciate boots. And so I saw that you had a lot of boots on my boots, boots boots she likes boots <laughs> i like hats and glasses so that's my thing as well well <laughs> you know sometimes I'll, I'll go get some boots but not girl boots uh <laughs> not kinky boots uh but yeah you were great and now that charlie has has left left us very first uh member of the orville bridge crew to to die by the way so you you got a first right there I'm sure you're going to be called up to a lot of conventions for a lot of years to, to you know, come and say hi to everybody, sign some swag here and there. So you got that to look forward to if you want it. <laughs> I mean, I went to Comic-Con. That was really fun. Yeah, they got a lot of cool stuff there. Um, now, Charlie, um, you know, is a little bit divisive among among the fandom. They're like, she, she, you know, she doesn't like Isaac. But other people are like, oh, she's great. I see her point of view. Uh, so th there's a lot of that going on. But now, since she's gone, everyone's, I see it in the comments all the time, bring her back, bring her back. Uh, we, we have to bring her back. Uh, has there been any, any uh, effect on you, on things that you've read about uh, people not getting Charlie or loving Charlie? What's been your experience with the fandom so No, far? my massive plan. I, I, I love it. I wanted people to... As long as people are passionate about my character, I mean, I'm not the character, so I don't take anything offensive. If someone's like, I hate her, I'm like, yeah, good, exactly. I would too. I mean, that's the point. I want people to hate me and then see a little bit of a journey. And then by the end, for people to be weeping. That's perfect. I did my job. We did our job. And it just makes me happy that that, you know, that was what people kind of took away. And it shows the difference between day one when the episode aired, what people thought about her to this last episode. So it makes me feel really good all around. I don't really get mad at the bad comments. I, I don't appreciate the ones where they're like, she sucks at acting. Cause that one's, that one's not true. That one's not true at all. And I was going to say that I was like, you know, we didn't know exactly who you were back when they announced that you were going to be playing a, a character on the show. I had no idea you were the Charlie was going to be such a serious character and that you were going to pull it off so amazingly. Um, I mean, that's a that's a hard type of character to play. And it's like you did it effortlessly. So I wanted to I just wanted to get that out there because I really enjoyed what you're doing uh, with Charlie. Um I guess we probably have to end here in, a, in in just a minute. So I want to know how excited are you, even though Charlie probably won't be a part of it. Uh, how do you feel on getting on us, the fandom, getting another season of the Orville? Do you, do you feel like it's something that can possibly happen? I think it's very, very, very possible. And the more that you guys keep asking these questions and the more that people want it is going to make it, you know, happen, to be honest. Yeah, we just got to make the numbers happen. Click on things, yeah. everybody. But just the fans and, and everyone wanting a season four, that's what they look, that's what, you know, the people that are making the decisions of to bring back a season four want to see. They want to see everyone really excited about seeing something. So if you guys have any homework back at home, just keep it up so that there is a season four. Well, they're all excited to see more Charlie. I just don't think that's going to happen. But it maybe could. It, it could. It's sci-fi. Many characters in science fiction have been brought back. Uh, and I know we'd love to see you more. An identical twin that's like complete opposite and like overly nice. And, and drinks that tequila and not the bourbon. Yeah. 
Well, I want to thank you for talking with me today. I don't want to keep you too long, though I could. Uh, <laughs> so just do what you do. Uh, answer those phone calls because I'm sure there's lots of offers starting to, to roll in. And uh, the fandom will be thinking about you. Well, thank you so much. And enjoy the episode tomorrow night or Thursday. Well, for some of us on certain parts of the world, it's Wednesday. <laughs> but right, yes, right. we will. We're very much looking forward to it. And thank you so much, Ann. All right. I'll talk to you later. Thank right, you. Bye now. Bye.